Hey everybody, it's me, Taryn Eileen, and welcome back to our Nancy Drew Let's Play. Um, today we are actually starting a new Nancy Drew game. This one is called uh, The Curse of Blackmore Manor. Um, if you go to my previous episode, you can see a little preview of what this game is going to be about, but I am really excited to get into this one. Um, yeah, it's one of my favorites. Lots of fun. So here we go. Welcome to my latest case. Oh, by the, the way, I'm still at Manor. my parents' house. To start, so. choose junior or senior <laughs> detective. If you're new to adventure games or need some help, uh, choose junior detective, please. Dear Ned, greetings from jolly old England. <laughs> Although right now I'm not so sure about the jolly part. That's because I'm on my way to Blackmoor Manor, where the daughter of one of our neighbors is living. The daughter, whose name is Linda, recently married Hugh Pendleton, a British diplomat. Hugh travels a lot, so the only people at the manor with Linda are Hugh's aunt, Mrs. Drake, and Hugh's 12-year-old daughter, Jane. The thing is, ever since Linda moved into the manor, her health has gone downhill. She's practically bedridden, and no one seems to know why. Her mother is convinced something is terribly wrong and wants me to find out what. So here I am, about to be dropped off at a huge centuries-old mansion in the middle of a dark, foggy moor. <laughs> I can't tell whether the butterflies in my stomach are because I'm excited or just a tad creeped out. Talk to you soon. I hope. <laughs> Nancy. Night, Mish. Good luck. Nancy. Oh my gosh. Who's there? Hello? See anything? Uh, let's get inside. Now? Ah! There's something oh. out there! Where, there? child? Over there! It's gonna be gone. I mean, something was out there. Uh, come in! I'm Mrs. Drake. I take it you and Nancy Drew? Mm -hmm. Yes, and I really did see something, Mrs. Drake. I heard something, too. Oh, people are always seeing and hearing things on the moor at night, especially you Americans. Why don't you just go on up to your room? It's the one with the moon on the door. I'd like to see Linda, okay. if I could. I'm afraid Linda is uh, not quite ready to meet with you just now. But mm. please, come see me after you've unpacked. I'll be in the conservatory. All right, thank you. Can I move now? Oh, okay, there we go. Ludi sing gadia ludi non sunt. Probably pronounced that wrong, very wrong, but there's these symbols. Oh, here's my luggage. Like, why does it let me get in my luggage if I can't get anything out? I oh, well. wonder what goes there. Something fits in here, but mm. what? Okay. Mm. Ooh. Oh, look, you can flip through it. And you have different, uh, constellation stuff. Okay. Um, ooh, box. I changed the colors there on the box. These are the same as some of the colors over here. I mean, not colors, but symbols over here. Let's see if we can find, like this one, the links. This one's green. Oh, it's still green. I don't think that matters then. Hmm. Okay. 
Oh, maybe north, south, east, west. This over here. Hmm. Maybe? Let's go... Red, red, green, blue. I don't know if this is gonna do anything, but we are going to try it since, um, um, okay, so we got a lion, like probably Leo, dragon. Um, the lynx. What else do we have? There we go. A fish. Bunny. Um, I don't think there's a bot. Doesn't look like I can flip it. So, we shall try this. <clears> hmm. <throat> okay, so... None of those. We got the lynx, which is north, so it's gonna be red. Um... Tars are some major... Okay, here's the fish. Which is blue. The bunny is south, which is green. Leo is east, which is red. And dragon is also red. Um. Yeah, let's try that. I think we got it, guys. So we have the lynx, which is gonna be- oh! Hold on, they- they can be, um... Half... So this one's gonna be half green, like, um, and then... Red. Who? Ooh, okay, uh, ink. North is full. So I think dragon and lynx was full. Then the blue. <laughs> okay, this is gonna be a bit confusing to me the way I'm drawing it, but hopefully we can get it in just this little, little bit. Same as that one. Okay. Um. Let me just make sure. Uh, okay, so we have the link switches up, which was the full. Um, dragon was up. Okay. Leah was to the side. Okay, I think I got it. Okay, let's try this again. So we got Leo, which is gonna be red. Oh, there, okay. Um... I think it's gonna be like. Da, da, da. This, that side's red. I think it's like. this. And we have a lynx, which is full red. Um, dragon, full red as well. Uh, 
fish. We have blue. And the blue... Uh, no, I messed up. I think... On the lion. The lion was here. The red is here. No, I got it. And... The fish is the opposite. The red's over here and the red's over there. Okay. Um... I think this one... Oops, it's red. But it's this way. Make sure. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Got it. Okay, so then the fish is the opposite. Like that. And then the bunny is a green half. This oh. is. Well, maybe it was a full moon? I don't know. I don't know what just happened, but um, I did it. <laughs> this lens is supposed to go into a telescope that sits on a tripod. Okay. I wonder if that goes into um, that hole over here. Because it looks like kind of like the same shape. Yep. I have no idea what this is. Okay. Coolness. Um, let's keep exploring. Okay, we need a telescope for this, um, which we don't have yet. Nope. Bum, bum, bum. Cook. Ball's Head Pub, this is Tommy. Hi, this is Nancy Drew. Right, right, Nancy Drew, out at the old Blackmore Manor, are you? Coo, you must be Ink Marvin <laughs> up there. Pity about your kitchen, but we'll fix you up for some Bex and Posh. Just tell me what you'd like. Uh, okay. What do you have? We've got some loop-de-loop, -loop, bangers and mash, a real fine pinky and perky, and a delicious dog's eye, me fork and knife, just rubber ducked. Uh... Hello? Uh, <laughs> could you repeat that? Sure, we've got some loop-de-loop, -loop, bangers and mash, pinky and perky, and a dog's eye, What's and they're all dog's Robin Hood. Eye? Can I have the dog's eye? That'll make me gooseberry right proud. Uncle Fred and Johnny Rudder? Uh, okay. All right, then. We'll come round and leave it at your Rory. Oh, and we've got no hot potato about, so it might take a bit. <laughs> but we'll have it up to you in no time. Fish and taters. I did not understand any of that. I'm sorry, I cannot take your call right now. I oh, that's going to be the, the husband. Call me back later. Thank you. Okay. I was wondering who that was. That's gonna be the husband. Okay. This is cool. Mm -hmm. Books. And. John Pambolin. In a faraway place beside a pond since gone dry, there lived a frog named Grinny. Granny was content to live by himself and never ventured into the pond, for back then it was fearsome, a fearsome place full of crocodiles that lurked beneath the surface, just waiting for a tasty little morsel like Granny to swim by. Well, I need that. 
I can't take that with me? Oh, um, water, earth, fire, and air. Long ago, four nations lived together in harmony. <laughs> that whole thing. It's just a cute storybook. Okay. How ever do I have to learn this? Yes, I'm afraid you do. If I do well, can we play a game? Yes, but only in French. Oh. This is not a good time. I need the key. key. I need the key. Hmm. Oh, forget it. Stay in Italy as long as you want, then. Yeah, Some kind yeah. of husband you're yeah. proving to be. It's not all in my head. Don't bother. I wish I could explore around this room more, but it's fairly limited. <clears throat> Linda? Hi, it's me, Nancy Drew. Nancy Drew, our friendly neighborhood detective. Well, welcome to Blackmoor Manor. I apologize for greeting you under such unusual circumstances. So, how are you feeling? How am I feeling? Well, I feel like... I feel like something really strange is happening. Could you be more specific? Could I be more specific? Mm. Ah, the ace detective is grilling me for details. <sighs> I'm tired all the time, my mouth is dry, my vision is blurry. But that's not important. Here's what's important, Nancy. There are some doors that should never be opened. There are some doors that hold secrets which must never be known. That's everything you need to know. Now if- Okay. Mommy, can I come in? No. You're supposed to be in your lessons. Lessons are over. I want to meet Nancy. I said no, Jane. Okay. That was my stepdaughter. She can be such a pest sometimes. Anyway, I understand mm -hmm. you feel an obligation to my mother, but trust me. There's nothing you can do. You're welcome to stay. But I strongly recommend that you go home as soon as possible. Please, Linda, just tell me what's wrong. Linda? Nope. Okay, I'll let you rest. But I'll be back. I'm here for you if you need me. Interesting. Uh, find out more about the stars. I'm finished with that. Oh, look, web search. <laughs> I already did it. <laughs> um, Check. Talk Check. to Linda, figure out. Okay, where the conservatory is. I'm finished with that. Okay. Oh, there we go. So apparently Jane might know where a telescope is. Oops, that's not the door. Um, let's go down. Ooh. There goes my cell phone. Hello? Hi, Nancy. It's Mrs. Petrov. How is everything? Have you seen Linda yet? Yes, and I'm afraid she seemed really depressed. I'm just about at my wit's end. I've never known her to act like this. The last doctor that examined her said that aside from a little dry skin, which is not unusual for her, she was perfectly fine. Why is she hiding behind that curtain? I have no idea. When I was out there last week, I got fed up and pulled the curtain back. She threw a fit, but otherwise she looked absolutely normal. A little pale, perhaps, but who mm. wouldn't be pale, cooped up like that? Something has changed her. Something in that house. Oh. Hugh is just as bewildered and upset by her behavior as I am. Please get to the bottom of this, Nancy. You're our last hope. Where is Hugh? He was called to Rome. As a diplomat, he's always being called out of the country without warning and without any say in the matter. 
He'd much rather be there with Linda. Although... Although what? It's just that Hugh said it hasn't been very easy for him to talk to her lately. Whenever he calls, which is at least once a day, Linda always seems to fly off the handle for no reason. Which doesn't mm. make sense. Linda has always been extremely level-headed and even-tempered. She never gets angry. At least she didn't used to. Who exactly is Mrs. Drake? She's Hugh's aunt. She's taken care of Blackmore Manor ever since her brother died. He was Hugh's father. She's a bit of a character. In what way? The way she spends all her time in that conservatory, slouching around, trowel in hand, murmuring to herself. You'd think she was burying something. <laughs> or somebody. Goodbye, Mrs. Petrov. Just because someone Goodbye, likes to plant oh, does not thing. mean anything. My niece is on call and her husband's out of town, and, and I told her I'd go over there and babysit if she had to work. So if you call and I don't answer, that's why. Bye. Okay. Uh, I think this is the conservatory. Yep. It's pretty cool. Like, I would love to, like, have something like this in my house. Not that I like plants. I have never... Ooh, looks like John Pendleton may have developed some of the plants that are in here himself. Before. Well, you know. <laughs> never been able to take care of a plant that well. This must be some kind of well, but where's the water? Doesn't work. Probably because the well's empty. Okay. This looks like that frog story. A carnivorous plant. Cool. <laughs> That's probably not a good idea. Okay. <laughs> Messing with her plants is probably not a good idea. Ew, one tablet every six hours as needed for allergy symptoms. To Letitia Drake. Is that her? May cause drowsiness. Do not drive or operate heavy machinery while taking this drug. Benzaline. All settled in? Good. I'm happy that you're visiting Linda, but I know how much you teenagers like your televisions and loud stereos, so I must insist that you act respectfully and civilly while you stay with us. Since my nephew Hugh is away on business, I am in charge of this household. And if there's one thing I cannot stand, it's noise. Hugh's daughter Jane is staying with us and would very much like to meet you, but please try not to distract her. She has her studies and mustn't be disturbed during her lessons. Is anyone else staying here? We do not have any permanent house staff, if that's what you mean. The Penvalents have always been self-reliant. We get on quite well without being continuously mollycoddled by a squadron of insipid, gossiping ne'er-do-wells. Now, <laughs> we do have two other house guests. A Mr. Nigel Mukherjee, who is researching the Penvalen family history in the I library. I forgot about him. And Ethel Bossany, Jane's tutor. Do you know what's wrong with Linda? Oh, Linda simply needs some time to adjust to her new living situation. England is not the United States. We do things differently, or should I say properly, here. The doctor believes it's just a case of nerves. Is that what you believe? I don't know, and the doctors don't know. No one seems to know anything. All I've been told is that Linda is unwell and that in her stead, I must look after matters. Now, please, I really do not have time to entertain you. You may have the run of the house, but do not break anything, and refrain from mucking about with items that aren't yours. Two rules Jane seems incapable of following. <laughs> and before I forget, our kitchen is being remodeled, so our dining situation is rather unorthodox. I've made arrangements with a local restaurant to deliver meals to us. There should be a programmed number for them on the phone in your room. Feel free to order whatever you'd like. I spoke with Mr. Tucker at the Boar's Head Pub, but frankly, I'm not at all sure what he said. Yes, his language is quite colorful, isn't it? He's Cockney, you see. My brother Alan and I loved to make up Cockney rhymes when we were young. We'd drive our governess quite batty. <laughs> Haven't got a pot of glue. Haven't got a pot of glue. Ah, how we teased her. 
Pot of glue? A clue, dear. Haven't got a clue. Rhymes hmm. with glue, you see. I'm concerned about that thing I saw outside. It was purely your imagination, unless you saw a, a stray dog. But I will not countenance any histronics about this issue. We have enough to worry about with Linda. And please do not get any ideas about going outside to investigate. I do <laughs> not want you tracking mud all over this house. This mm. conservatory is very okay. beautiful. But why isn't there any water in the well? I'm not quite sure. We never really used it, but it was always full of water. That is, until my brother died. And then it just dried up. Hmm. Most of these plants were brought over by my grandfather. He was quite the adventurer. I remember when he brought back Lulu from the Amazon. At first, Mother wouldn't allow us to play with it because it had picked up too many unsuitable words from sailors. But it gradually learned proper manners. Who is Lulu? Lulu is a very old parrot. She must be over 80 years old. That's cool. Please be very careful with her, especially if you feed her. Parrots have quite delicate constitutions, you know. Goodbye. Run along. Run along. Okay. Who's hungry? Who's ready for some nummies? Did you say something, Mrs. Drake? Not to you, dear. <laughs> Who is she talking to? <laughs> the plants. She is a little nutsy, but that's okay. Let's check our internet. Blackmore Manor. Oh, nope, I clicked on the wrong one. The stars. Oh, look, here's all the symbols. Is that the symbols that were on the... Hmm. Do I click them in, like, order? Or is there a certain thing to click? I did not mean to do that. Okay. Um, Blackmore Manor. Built in the 12th century by a warrior named Randolph the Red, Blackmore Manor is one of the oldest residences in England. Randolph and his descendants came to be known by the ancient name for the area surrounding Blackmore, Penvalon. The Pemvalins have inhabited the manor since it was built and abandoned. It was abandoned in 1650 after its owner was executed for witchcraft, but by 1715 the Pemvalins have moved back into the manor and re-established themselves and as a respectable family, a reputation which remains to this day. Hmm. Cockney rhyming. Uncle Fred and Johnny Rudder's bread and butter, teapot lids, kids, hickory dickory dot clock, baked beans, or Dixie Queen's jeans. Nanny goat is boat. Huh. Okay. Ooh, what's this? It stopped working. Mm -hmm. Do -do -do -do. Looks like a piece is missing. All these have like a piece. Ooh. Cricket. Wonder what happened in there. Please stay out of the kitchen until the fire damage is repaired. Okay. Um. Yeah, let's see if there's something missing on all of these. Looks like a piece is missing. Yep. Looks like a piece is missing. So we're gonna have to find these pieces. Looks like a piece is missing. I just wanna make sure like I see everything because sometimes, like I remember the last time I played this game and- Looks like a piece is missing. I like didn't click on everything and I got stuck for the longest time because something couldn't happen because I didn't click on Looks something. like a piece is missing. Okay, I so need something else for this. That's all of them. These are everybody's, uh, coat of arms, I'm guessing. Ooh, he has a gargoyle. 
but his coat of arms is missing. Uh, Novus Mundus. Puppy. Okay, um... Are there any? Yep. We have a rainbow. Okay. Do 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 do. Just see all of them. There's a lot of descendants who lived in this house. I'm assuming I can see these ones. That's the one from upstairs, so that must be her room. Yep, she has a telescope. Okay. Ooh, the parrot. Lulu. And that's the guy today. Uh, let's go in here. Ah I'll yes, are you here from the agency? It's about time. No, I'm Nancy Drew, a friend of Linda's. How do you do? I'm Nigel Mukherjee. I'm researching the Penvalent family, and Mrs. Drake has graciously opened the library for me. Nothing much has been written about the Penvalents. Until now. Why do you think that is? It might have something to do with their scandalous history. Or perhaps it has something to do with the family treasure. Scandalous history? Well, having a family member burned as a witch can hardly be considered a mark of pride, I dare say. And then there's the whole business with the Blackmoor Beast. Who was the family member? Eleanor Penvalin, tried and mm. convicted of witchcraft in 1650. I wonder if Quite she's the on the height wall. of the witch trials here in Essex. It was rumored that Cromwell arranged the conviction. Cromwell? Oliver Cromwell? Ironsides? I suppose they don't teach history any longer in the U.S. They don't Lady teach Penvalin was a English rather history. vocal critic of Cromwell's <laughs> policies and helped many of his enemies flee the country. Whether she actually was a practitioner of witchcraft is unknown, although many visitors to the manor during her tenure reported hearing strange, ghostly bells. Some even saw phantom hands floating about the manor tolling their charmed chimes. Tell me about the Penvalin family treasure. For centuries, the Penvalins have been very secretive. Some believe they're protectors of a fabulous treasure or of some dark secret. Can you tell me about the Blackmore Beast? It's a story that's been told for generations out here. During the 1600s, many of the villagers reported seeing a strange beast with red eyes and That's giant fangs prowling the moors. They asked the mistress of Blackmoor Manor, Eleanor Penvalin, to put a bounty on the beast's head. But, oddly enough, she not only refused, she forbade anyone from hunting the creature. It was rumored that the beast was Eleanor's husband, whom she had cursed for finding out too much about the Penvalin's secret. When I was walking up to the house, I saw something with red eyes that called out to me. Really? How extraordinary. Are you sure it wasn't just jet lag? No. Positive, and I heard it make this kind of growling sound. Perhaps it was the cursed husband of Eleanor Penvalin, prowling about the moors I in doubt search that, of lost but... yanks. <laughs> Could be Very someone funny. trying to... Uh, copy it. Who are all those paintings of in the Great Hall? Those are the Penvalins who owned Blackmoor Manor at one time or another. I'll let you get back to your work. Valet! Okay, well I believe that is all the time we have for today, but thank you for joining me. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> I don't know. We shall see you all next week. Have courage and be kind. Bye!